Hi everybody and welcome, we are live and today is finally the day. There's been a lot of questions about this build and I'm going to try and answer everything as best I can. So welcome, my name is Lutilisius and I have been playing this game for a few hours by now. The thing I always try to do is build builds that are like fresh or new. Um, but of course, the more you play, the less fresh and new ideas you get, right? And the less new things get discovered. So sometimes you gotta get inspiration in other angles. And I've got a lot of good buddies on the game that are helping me, right? As soon as I get a bit of a block on what to do, they always help me. And that was the case when Alfie came to me with a build made by Captain Lance. It was a, well, quote unquote, immortal guardian, which used mechanics with life or energy shield on block. Extremely defensive, extremely strong, but it, do it does have some issues, and most of those issues are based on DPS. Um, that doesn't mean that you can't get enough DPS out of it, and that's why we're here because I'm getting some regular questions on a daily basis on how I built the build, how it's working, some things that might work, some things that might not work, and most of the people that whisper me are finding me here. As you can see, this is uh, PUE.ninja. I wouldn't call it the most reliable source of finding high DPS builds because you can pretty easily meme this with, I don't know, Watcher's Eyes and just equip five, six, seven of them. It won't work in game, but Ninja doesn't know that. And there's like millions of ways to manipulate your DPS. So you always have to be careful when you see a high DPS here. It doesn't necessarily mean that that's the DPS. But it does work the other way around as well, right? If you have Ball Lightning, you might do hundreds of millions of DPS and you only see like 2.2 or 1.2 on Ninja. So it works the other way around. As you can see, this is me. This is a good buddy of mine. We're both using the same build. Uh, he's doing some experimental stuff with it. He likes to work with... Uh, what's it called? Um, Megalomaniacs, right? Try and mix and match. And find some new stuff and it's pretty exciting you can do a lot with the boat but of course I get like a lot of whispers from people saying well we've been watching this list and what's going on what are you doing so I decided to make a guide with some of the most frequently asked questions about the build um, so yeah let's get going let's see what I can tell you about it so first thing you need to know that if you want to know about the defense mechanics about this build I highly advise you to go to Captain Lance's YouTube and he did an amazing guide about how the defense mechanics work, about the combination of the Aegis Aurora and the Chorus Kidding Elixir with the, um, what's it called here, yeah, the Ivory Tower and how that interacts with your flask mechanics and the traitor that you need here. And, uh, anything you need to know about that? It was his idea, credit where credit is due, um, but I understand he stopped playing the build, he started playing something else, and I tried to keep pushing, because there were a few issues with the build that I thought could be resolved making this, well in my opinion probably the strongest build on the server right now, and I'm talking about strongest overall, right, you've got a lot of builds that have way more damage, you've got a lot of builds that have way more toughness, but it's like the complete package. You can survive pretty much everything, and at a certain point, damage is just numbers. So, before I start answering all these questions, let's look at the numbers. For that, we need to go to POB. And I decided to do a fresh import. So we go to the import, we start with the account, and we do a fresh import, so you guys see there is no fuckery. You know, there's a lot of people that inflate their numbers in PUB, and I wanted to do a fresh one so you guys can see no weird things going on. So Spark, configuration. So 
So I'm not messing with anything else. I'm not adding anything shock. You could. You could do that, but it's not like the most reliable add of damage, right? You don't always have the same shock effect depending on the uh, total health pool of the monsters. So you gotta take that into consideration. For some reason, if you do a fresh imp block, this isn't enabled, so we have to manually enable that, and that brings us to our DPS. So that's about 82 million, right? 100% crit chance, 592 multiplier 80. With that, we have a 12.3 million effective hit pool, which is enough. There are built with uh, built with much more, but you also have sustain, right? If you get hit, you heal. So, yeah, this is, is plenty. And for resistances, we are pretty much everything capped. Um, about 70k armor. I, for me, found that that's enough. If you have less DPS, you might want to up that defense a little bit. But I found that the higher my DPS got, the less I had need for extreme defensive mechanics. But make no mistake, this is still more tanky than I would say 75% of the builds on the server with this DPS. Now all these numbers are numbers of course before Headhunter kicks in when that happens well it's just silly. But the reason I show it this way is because a lot of people think that you need a Headhunter for builds and you shouldn't in my opinion right it's just my opinion you shouldn't build around a Headhunter. The Headhunter should be that whipped cream on the pie or whatever you want to call it. It shouldn't be your core mechanic. So yeah this is the numbers. Now these numbers don't really tell you all too much because if you're like in a closed environment you get all those sparks to hit you might actually get them to pierce and hit again so this still isn't telling you anything the only thing you know is that it's a lot of damage uh, but yeah if you're looking at the Ninja comparison then what you see is that for some reason it gives us this damage because some things it counts and other things it doesn't count and it, it's just off so never just rely on uh, that ninja basically is the thing that i'm trying to tell you now let's get back to the game because we had some frequently asked questions about what to do what not to do budget questions etc so let's get back all right so Budget questions. A few things to note. Do we need one passive voices? I always start with that because it's like a hot topic. It kind of depends on what kind of a gamer you are. For me, when I hit level 100, right, and you have the currency, every note in a min-max type situation that you waste is a no-no for me. But this, having said that, this would be the first cost cost, uh, cost cut I would do. I would remove these for a three passive voices and you'd be just fine. What would you remove? Probably these notes. These two. You might get slightly less crit chance but you'll still probably cap. Now there's a few things that you could do if you remove these notes. You could probably get one of these jewels but better. Right we have a few like these with car speed on there. And let me see here. Energy shield. And you could probably say I'm going to remove those nodes and get these with crit chance for lightning skills. It's expensive but it's not stupid expensive. So that's an option. And you'd be saving 2 times 225 exalt which is uh, 450 minus about 70. That would save you 380x right there. So no need to do that. That will be the first cost. That you can cut. Uh, a couple of other things. Like I said, Headhunter, I use it because it's fun and because it adds something, not because it's necessary. You'll be perfectly fine with a very good Stygian voice and with a good Abyssal Eye Jewel in there, and you'll, you'll just be fine. So, this would be the second cost call. And then we have these Wool Palm Gloves. Uh, all things together, about 800 exalts. Do you need them? No. You can get for like 100 to 150 exalts, you can get a pair of gloves if you're lucky. You might have 10-15% overall less damage, but you just don't need it. So there's a couple of questions that I got. Do I need this? Do I need that? A lot of these things are like fully customizable. So what do you need? What are the core mechanics that you actually need?
Right, sorry for that. That's one of the guys that has a couple of questions for me. Um, if if he joins me, I can I can help him live. Um, but yeah. So what are the things you actually do need? Right, that was the question. You need this flask. You need this ivory tower. You need the Aegis Aurora. And you're gonna need one. 8% decrease the fact of non-curse aura from your skills. Because like Captain Lance already explained, you're going to be needing 100% for several reasons. One of those reasons is going to be to cap your cold resistance. But there's more reasons to go for more in the aura department. So right here we have 8%, 8%, 8%, 8 and here we have Onslaught. I didn't take Onslaught here because we have it on the boots. And do you need a jewel like that? you don't need it you just need one aura effect and you might be looking for something with a few dex nodes because dexterity is a big issue for this build and you really don't want to be going overboard by getting something like that it's all luxury it's not necessary okay so like i said we need the traitor core mechanics that means you need a balbala version of your brutal restraint you're going to be needing a corruscating elixir, the armor, the shield, and that's it. You need a nebulous, it's best in slot, but it's not mandatory. I would advise you do so, you don't need it. And that's really it. All these other things that you see here are fully customizable. You can do whatever you want, but there's a few things you must know. First of all, reservation. I've been getting a lot of questions. So I'm putting the auras in the helmet and it doesn't work. Why can't I reserve this? What's going on? Now, first of all, a lot of people are using the anomalous or divergent arrogance because it gives more reservation efficiency, but the normal version, which is actually cheaper, gives you 5% increased aura effect. So if you're looking for more effect of your auras, then you need to find a way to not use the divergent or anomalous. Now, the easiest way to do that is to have your life reservation mastery right there. And as you can see, we don't use the mana reservation mastery because we don't need it. Now, the only reason we don't need it is because we do a couple of extreme things. First of all, we use a level 4 enlighten here. And we use a level 4 enlighten here. And then again comes the question, do you need to do that? No, but you're going to have to make a lot of changes on the tree if you don't. So for me, I think if you want to make full use of all these auras, yeah, you, you kind of want to do that. And then comes the problem that I thought was, was one of those bigger things to overcome, especially when you're on a budget. If you want to set it up like this, you want to have at least two of these 35 percenters uh, with introspection. Doesn't need to have Dexterity, doesn't need to have Chaos Resistance. Although, if you don't have Chaos Resistance in here and Dexterity, you're going to have to find another way because it's almost impossible to squeeze it on your gear. So I would advise you to go for that if the budget allows it. If it doesn't, you're going to be getting Attributes and you're going to be getting Resistances on your Jewels. It's going to eat in your damage, but that's the cheapest way to do it. You do, however, need the 8% here and the 8% here. Mana Reservation Efficiency of Skills. And I would suggest you go for these two as well. On your amulet, as you well know, you go Charisma. And you're going to be taking this wheel here. So that's the Reservation. If you do that, the only thing you need to do next is to have this one with Reservation Efficiency or any of your other jewels. Because most people make the mistake of buying a pretty expensive or natural instinct with armor. Because they see it on a guide or they see it on, I don't know, PoE.ninja and they're like, okay, I need that. No, you don't. You've got a gazillion jewels. Why would you get the most expensive one? So that's another cost cut that you could do there. Um, one of the other things that I would advise. You could get a melding of the flash with reservation efficiency. Do you need it? Again, no. If you can find good jewels with RMR on it, that's going to save you a hell of a lot of money. 
for me because I'm min-maxing my crit crit multi and my cast speed. Finding a jewel like that with Aramar on it, well, it's proven to be impossible. I am life searching, but it's just not that. So that's why this is the better route for me. But if you start this build, don't don't go that route. Do yourself a favor and save dozens of exalts by just doing that. Now, a couple of other questions. People have seen this build and have seen me play this with the Hands of the High Templar. I've been using these Hands of the High Templar for quite a while and it works just fine. I used to have a plus four chest, Hands of the High Templar, and I got to about 40 million DPS on POB. And then, you know, you get that idea, what if you use a, a pair of gloves like these? Right, it's, it's basically increased critical damage, increased critical strikes, a mini empower, and three support. So, you could call it a mini 10 link. Well, that gives you some problems. Mana cost, first of all. We're gonna get back to that in a second. The next problem is that it's usually expensive to get these gloves. Having said that, these gloves are giving me double the DPS a plus 4 chest gave. And a plus 4 chest, you're looking at a mirror. Now, these gloves... Or more than a mirror, granted, but you can get, like I just said, better gloves, or <laughs> better is the wrong word, you can get similar gloves for a better price. You can pay no more than 100 to 150x, and you will have pretty much all these mods, but they will just not be elevated. And you'll you'll have a good time, it'll, it'll work. Which makes this a cheaper option to the chest, but there's more. By going this route, you save gem slots which enables you to mess around with all different kinds of things now the first thing that i was thinking about if you get a plus one that usually isn't as good as a plus two or plus three or plus four or whatever but because we have so many extra slots open and we cannot use an empower or enhance for our auras because we'd be reserved, uh, reserving too much i was like we might be able to use that on let's say a sniper's mark so at that point you create a level 27, 81 sniper's mark. 81 quality in total. You create 27, 81 conductivity. A 27, 81 phantasmal smite. And this beauty, Divergent Righteous Fire. 27, 81. So as soon as you start going with these divergent gems, uh, you think Ashes of the Stars, and I would say that's the next part that's pretty much mandatory. But it's pseudo-mandatory. It's not as mandatory as, let's say, the shield, the armor, and the flask. Those things are just, that's the base of your build. Now, I've been having a lot of questions lately from people saying, well, can I use Chevron? Yeah, you can. It's plain and simple. You can also dual-wield uh, Nebulas. But keep in mind, all these mechanics are based on a kind of a balance. And if you rip away one of these items, there's a price to pay. In case of the armor, replenishes energy shield by 2% of armor when you block. Now you're going to be blocking all the time, because that's the way we set it up. We're block capped. So that's 1500, give or take, 1500. Every time you block, which is all the time. That's what's keeping you alive. So removing the shield... It works, but you're going to get killed, like every other build. And the reason to go this build is because you don't want to get killed. Same for the armor. You can remove it, but the amount of energy shield you're going to lose is too big, if you ask me. I wouldn't do that. Now, a couple of other questions that I had. Um, I've got 500 X. I've got 1000 X. I've got 300 X. Can I make this build? A lot of questions I got. And to answer that, you got to ask yourself, what exactly is it that you're building? Right, if you want to buy the basic part of the build, yeah, sure, you can do it with a few hundred X. And I know there's a lot of people ripping their hair out at my screen right now, saying a few hundred X. Um, I would say if you have a like 30, 40, 50 X budget, this, this, I don't think this is the build for you. Um, I've excelled in the past in making really cheap builds really powerful but at some point you, you're kind of going to be tossing a lot of currency anyway to to get those bigger upgrades um but the fact that the build isn't as popular as in my opinion it should be 
makes it possible with a few humble exalts to generate the same output and the same damage as a lot of multi-metal builds while staying alive. Now a couple of disadvantages to this build because there's always pluses and you know negatives, minuses. One of the things that you've got to be careful for is Nullifier. That is a nemesis type monster with a nemesis mod and it can remove not only your flask charges but also the current flask effect. And we are well, we're dependent. We don't have the flasks, we're going to die. So, nullifier is a problem. How do you deal with nullifiers? You kill them before they hit you. It's, it sounds stupid, but that's why this build has become the thing it has become. Because I had a problem in the simulacrums with this setup. Because some waves have removed flask charges on it. And there you go. That's a nightmare. When that happens, you will die. You don't have flask charges, you have no defense. That's what's keeping you alive. And I was trying to find a way around it, and in the end I'm like, okay, fuck it, I'm just going to get so much damage that remove flask charges will not happen because I will remove their health before they remove my flask charges. And that works. Now, the way this is set up, do you need voices at all? No. No, you don't. You can go large clusters. And you only need one Doriana's lesson. Although I've been looking for a way to get around that as well, uh, which is possible on a Crusader ring where you, instead of spell damage, create a situation where you have life gained for each enemy hit by your spells, in which case you will be leeching. That's a form of leech that isn't actual leech, so you could do no leech maps. And the reason you want that is because of the Righteous Fire mechanics, right? As soon as your life becomes one, Righteous Fire stops. It doesn't work anymore. So we got to find a way to replenish our life. Now, how do we do that? Like I said, we leech. And after we leeched, we can re-enable Righteous Fire. But to me, when, when I see a build like this, and I already have two one passive voices, I always look for a way for, to squeeze in a third. And basically what you'd be looking at is one, two, three, four, five, which is one extra note. So you'd be having an additional dual socket, if you have another one passive voices, an addition, uh, additional dual socket, and an additional point on the tree. Which is a bit difficult, because as of yet, I haven't found anything really good to use, so I'm using this point here. And you guys might be wondering why that point doesn't look like much. Well, it's a lot stronger than you might think it is, going back to PUB. Now, let's be honest, this is where a lot of us spend a lot of our time. When you start min-maxing a build, this is where you do it. You can buy 5,000 regrets and start wasting away on your tree, or you can do it in here and save a lot of time and cash. Now, this one note that looks like nothing is a million DPS. Why is it a million DPS? Because we have so many layers of DPS already, right? We have high spell damage percentage, we have a 100% crit strike chance, nearly 600% crit multiplier, so all these layers together accelerate each other. Now you have diminishing returns, but I can talk about that in, a, in, a, in another video. That's something that you should take into consideration as well when you really start min-maxing and diversify your layers of damage, or even add a double or triple dip. So looking at this setup, what would I improve? Um, to be honest, yeah, there's a few things we can improve, but it's going to be a bit expensive. Now, the thing I would improve is the armor I have right now is a plus one with six life, and I consider this a placeholder. It works, but the ideal armor for me in terms of damage would be plus one, plus two AOE. I'll explain why in one second. Or, if you go defensive, plus one, fifty percent reduced critical strike damage taken. Now, why would I go plus one, plus two AOE? Because, unlike Sniper's Mark, which doesn't do much. The Conductivity, Smite and Righteous Fire all have the AOE tag. If you look at this total DPS pool here, what you'd be getting is this. Imagine you have that plus one, plus two. That's a lot of extra damage. You can get just like that. And there's a few other things that you still need to do. 
In my opinion, car speed with triple crit multi is the way to go. So these are the best in slot jewels. Why? Because we already have all kinds of other damage that we can have. We don't need crit chance, spell damage we have a lot, lightning damage we have a lot. Car speed is lackluster, we take it nowhere. Yes, we have haste, but that's pretty much the only source. Now what happens if you add 5% car speed? It's kind of surprising, look at this. So we have this jewel. And we're going to carry that over to the bad one here. Which has the exact same amount of spell multiplier, lightning skills multiplier and elemental skills multiplier for the critical strikes. So that's a, a 48 -er, But it has a shitty 6% attack speed. So what happens if we add that 5% car speed? This might surprise you. It's only 5%, right? It's 2 million DPS. That puts you at 90. Now, there's a couple of people that will be watching this and might actually have a lot more to spend than me. I mean, I'm, I'm doing this on a 5-6 metal budget. There's a lot of people that have 10, 20 metals and, and are like, you know what, I want to do this stupid. Now, if you want to do this stupid, and I love those people because I, I like to do that as well, you would take your gloves and you would slam them. I know, that's a, that's a big ass slam if you have gloves like that. And they need to be on metal to do that. But let's say you do that and you have plus two duration, which is possible. Well... That's gonna put you at 102.4 million DPS, which is absolutely stupid for Spark. Now, as you guys have guessed, we are not talking about need anymore. We are not talking about whether this is the way you should do it. No. So what should you do? What should you aim for? Now, I am talking about a situation where you are able to clear all content in the game. And I do mean all content. So what, in my opinion, puts you at that spot? Looking at this DPS, you'll be doing that at 20 million. When it says 20 million here, you'll be clearing everything and probably with two fingers up the nose. You won't have to watch for anything and very rarely, rarely, rarely die. Now, the budget to get to that point kind of depends on you, right? Uh, there's a lot of people that come to me and say, I'm going to make your build. And then I ask how many exalts do you have? And they have like, let's let's say a number five, six hundred. And then they go to the market and they buy a 400 exalt nebulous and they say, well, you told me I could build it. Well, I hope I don't have to tell you guys. Just ration your cash. Buy the most critical parts first. Or craft, like I did with the rings. And if you have your critical parts, you can actually check how much money you have left for luxury. And luxury, I mean double spell damage nebulas, uh, corrupted versions of everything, uh, kind of implicit versions, uh, Everything armor, triple crit multi jewels, so one passive or three passive voices, all that shit. That that is luxury. So what you want to do is buy a brutal restraint, or roll Balbala until you get at least one of these nodes, right? The non curse all of skills. Now you might think, well, he just added that in there himself. So I think it's important we go back to the game so you can see that I'm not messing with you guys. That is actually what's on there. So we have non-curse, 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 and onslaught, which you don't need. You only need one of these nodes and the traitor, which means you need Balbala. And like I said, buy the basics, go for the basics, don't go mad. For reservation, you could copy my setup. You could also say, you know, there's a few things that he has in there that I might not want. Um, making things a little easier for you because the way I have this set up with the curse and the smite and the, that, that stuff and triple curse you don't need to do that you just don't you could put your auras in there and save yourself one enlighten right or um, well, there's a couple of customizable things that you can do as for the tree um, if you have the same amount of armor jewels that I have I would advise to exactly copy that setup so you don't get in a situation where you're like hey hold on a second I can resolve this or that the answer is always here. So you have the reservation here. And all the reservation nodes and the armor. And of course, a double armor helmet. 
those don't have to be expensive. You can whisper me in game if you want to know how to make those. But those don't have to be too expensive to make. You can make them yourself. It's pretty easy ish. Now, there's one more thing that we need to address that's important. When I started playing this build, I was always using Inspiration. Inspiration has the added advantage of having more critical strike chance. And it has the even bigger added advantage of mana cost. Because 111 mana is not really that much. If you have enough car speed and with that hunter you will, that means you run out. Now there's a couple of things that you can do to add your car speed, which is of course 260 for regeneration per second with Arcane Search. But that still won't be enough. So what do you need? Well, we all know that craft that has negative 7, right, to the non-channeling. But I advise if you start using these gloves and you don't want to be using inspiration anymore, because you don't, right? You have an inherent 3.5 critical strike chance to your skills, which means you're gonna cap your crit chance. So at that point, you're only using your inspiration for elemental damage, and I think there are better options like Awakened Elemental Focus at that point. So... You want to remove Arcane, uh, I mean, uh, what's it called here? Uh, the Inspiration. But, that gives you a problem. Because if you do that, you're going to be looking at a 96 mana cost. Per cast. And that's a problem. Especially if you cast fast. So, the things you could do is you could cheese it on the tree, right? Change these nodes. Drop one of the jewels into these nodes. That'll help with that. Or you can lock your suffixes on a good resistance, triple resistance like this ring, and start hitting it with Veiled Orb or Ice Beams, until you get your reduced mana cost of skills percentage version that we have here. It might take you 5 times, it might take you 20 times, I hope it doesn't, but that is the best way I've found to remove the cost and lower it to a manageable point. It's still a lot, but that's doable. And then you're looking at a 2.367 tooltip in the hideout, but that doesn't take into consideration the penetrate on the Watcher's Eye and that kind of stuff. For Watcher's Eyes, you've got a big range of options. You can go Determination, Reduce Critical Strikes, right? Uh, you can go Energy Shield for each enemy hit by your spells. I don't think you need it, but you could. Um, I mean, the sky is the limit. For me, I always go double pen. That, that seems to be the best, and I had the luck to get a decent uh, roll with the lightning damage on there. But again, you can go every which way you want. Uh, full freedom, there's nothing mandatory there. And, as my buddy Shinja pointed, pointed out, it's pretty easy to actually get to a situation where you use one with clarity and you have even less mana cost. Do you need it? Again, no. This is full freedom. And I think that's pretty much it. If you guys have any other questions, you know where to find me. Uh, I think I addressed pretty much everything about the build. I'm going to be putting timestamps in the video. So you guys can get each of the sub decks. Because we have been a little bit all over the place. I'm not really a, a lot of a... Not really a guide maker, per se. But I tried to just answer a couple of these questions. And... Uh, in terms of leveling, if you want to level this character, just use any generic leveling thing and restructure your tree. Because it's such a specialized tree, I don't think you should level a character and start making a tree like this. Just do your thing, level the way you always do, and then restructurize it with regrets. Shouldn't be too hard to do. If you have to cash to build this build, you have to cash for regrets. It's that simple. Now, if you guys have any questions after watching this video, let me know. Um, I might make a video about reducing damage and how that may help for Beyond, if that's something you guys are interested in, because with Beyond we don't want to have this type of damage. It's too much. You get less loot that way. But for pretty much any other situation, this is going to just destroy everything and uh, you're going to have a good time. If you have some cash left, you have some metals to burn, go this direction, you won't regret it. Trust me. Right, guys. So this is it. Anything you guys want to know, anything about the crafting mechanics or anything at all about how to make the helmet, just find me. You can also post a comment on the YouTube or find me on Twitch when I'm online. Uh, just let me know, right? If there's anything you want to know, I'll be happy to help as best I can. Well, 
If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it. Don't forget to follow on YouTube. Thank you very much, dude. And I will be back in a little while because this is done yet. There's a few things that I still want to do and this thing is the sky's the limit. So please stick with me because this weekend we will be back with some bench tests. And I'm going to be showing you high damage versus low damage and how crazy this build can really get. For now, I thank you all for watching. And I'll be seeing you guys on the next one. Goodbye.